Hey yo, what's good? So, we've all seen this picture before. I'm sure of it. Like, we all know that this picture, like, you put Muhammad Ali on Google, something like this picture comes up. In fact, I have this picture framed on my wall right now. I'm looking at it right now. I have this picture on my wall framed. This this happened 50 years ago in the rematch of between Muhammad Ali and Sonny Liston. In fact, this was the first time Muhammad Ali had introduced himself as Muhammad Ali. In the first fight, he was still Cassius Clay. He changed his name a few weeks after when he revealed that he was a member of the Nation of Islam, which caused a lot of controversy. There was a lot of security with the controversy of Muhammad Ali being in the Nation of Islam and Sonny Liston having ties with the mob, which many believe that because Sonny Liston had ties with the mob, that this fight was fixed. And I, too, believe that this fight was fixed because at the time they were saying that the phantom punch, as Ali called it, was did not land. You watch it slow motion, it did land. But I'm not arguing that it landed or not. I'm arguing that the fix was on because the punch didn't seem as devastating as it could be. And Sonny Liston was one of the greatest heavyweights to ever live as well. So he got hit with that perfect right hand, didn't get up. Uh, he did get up though. Like if, if you watch the whole fight, a lot of people, I thought this was it. Like this picture was it. Sonny Liston didn't get up, but Sonny Liston tried to get up. He fell back down. He got back up. Um, the referee was Jersey Joe Walcott. He just continued the action. But the action continued. Ali started bombing away on, on Sonny Liston. But uh, it wasn't until a ring editor or ring ring magazine owner, Nat Fletcher, and the timekeeper told them that the t that the fight ended. So <laughs> meanwhile, the fight was going on. Jersey Joe Walker just steps in and ends the fight. So there was controversy with that because um, Jersey Joe Walker did not stop the fight at that time. And then the controversy with the fight. And then people were, were they were mad, dude. They're like, I paid $100 for this? <laughs> the tickets were between $25 and $100. And a lot of people didn't didn't want to go. This this fight was like in Maine somewhere. And it had, it had been canceled. It, it was going to happen in November. But three days before November 1964... And three days before the fight, Ali just his stomach he had stomach problems, started vomiting, and it turned out he like he had a hernia. So he had to get it removed and couldn't fight until the twenty fifth of May of nineteen sixty five. So there you have that. And because Ali had had joined the Nation of Islam, many people didn't want to mess with him anymore, didn't want to be associated with him. So there were only two thousand 434 people in attendance can you believe this this most iconic picture in sports history i'm gonna say that it's the most iconic picture in sports history muhammad ali over sunny liston even if you don't know who sunny liston is you have seen this picture before there were only 2,000 people 2,434 people in attendance that night and last year they sold the 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 gloves that Muhammad Ali was wearing for uh, almost a million dollars. So it's just interesting how things unfold in history, man. You're like, man, I would have loved to have been there, but back then nobody wanted to be there. Oh, I think I believe in my heart of hearts that this fight was fixed because of Sonny Liston's ties to the mob. But that's just me. That's the um, Ali. You know, Ali said said after the fight, "Man, I hit any of you with that same punch, you all be out." But in the Rig Magazine article that I read on this punch, on the Phantom Punch, as they, as Muhammad Ali called it, he later admitted he he thought that that punch really didn't have that didn't have enough to knock out 
Sonny Liston. And I'm not arguing that that punch didn't have enough to knock out Sonny Liston, but um, to knock him out in the first round, like in the first two minutes of the first round, it seems like a bit much to me. But, yeah, we all know what happened to Muhammad Ali after this fight, you know, became the greatest fighter that ever laced a pair of gloves. You know, he's number three pound per pound all time at worst in people's list, you know what I'm saying? So we all know that. So Sonny Liston, he's a little bit more tragic. He's a shady character involved with the mob and involved with, like, breaking people's legs. You know, he was a scary dude before. That's why it was so shocking that Muhammad Ali had beat him. In fact, Sonny Liston was still favorite, even though Muhammad Ali beat him in the first fight. Sonny Liston was still an 8-5 to five favorite. So people were just shocked. They were pissed. They were chanting fake and fixed. This is how fickle people are, I'll tell you. <laughs> I'll tell you. This is 1965. And people were saying, boxing is dead. <laughs> and that I read in a Yahoo article the, from 1965. <laughs> they were saying that this is the end of boxing because of the fix. This is 1965, folks. We're saying the same thing now. That boxing is dead. <laughs> so cut it out. Cut it out. They were just so mad, so devastating. Um, Sonny Liston was the hero. For once in his life, he was the hero in this fight. He was the one to beat the villain in Muhammad Ali, but he just could not do it or wouldn't do it. Um, yeah, because for his whole career, there's a great documentary you can find on YouTube. It's called The Champion Nobody Wanted. So he was hated throughout his career. And the one time that people wanted him to win, to pull it off, was against this brash, arrogant guy calling him the greatest and then this Muslim, you know, turning into the turning with the nation of Islam. But he could not pull it out. He could not pull it out. He's one of the most hated champions in heavyweight history. Sonny Liston is. So after this fight, uh, he went 14 or he went he went undefeated for a while. He had he had 14 fights, 13 by knockout, and he was in line to fight Smokey. He was going to fight Joe Frazier for the championship, but he got he got stopped by Leotis Martin. And what's interesting about that fight is that Sonny Liston actually retired Leo, Leotis Martin afterwards because he detached his retina. So he, even though this guy knocked out Sonny Liston, he made him retire. That's how much of a beast. That's how intense. That's how hard hitting Sonny Liston was as a fighter back then. That he was a destroyer. He was a monster. He was a big bear, as Muhammad Ali called him. But uh, a year after that, Ali was found dead, and it's just shady, man. He was fighting with like heroin needles, and it's believed that it was tied with the mob. You know what I'm saying? But it's just shady, as um, as. Uh, what's his name? Boxing Beats and Ryan said in one of his videos, he said that he said that Sonny Liston was actually afraid of needles. So to be found with heroin, that's like someone put him there to suggest overdose. But this guy, if you're scared of needles, you you're not gonna shoot up heroin. You know what I'm saying, but it's always a shady character, and there's a bunch of shady stuff involved in this fight. Yeah. Is it one of the is it one of the most iconic moments in sports history? Yes, but it's also one of the most shady uh, moments in sports history that we will never know for sure what happened. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. Do you think this fight was fixed? Do you think the mafia paid Sonny Liston or forced Sonny Liston to, you know, stay down? Please comment below. And don't forget to subscribe. Peace.